just move this around a bit. Right, hi everyone, um, Detective Superintendent Daryl Sweeney uh, from the um, Christchurch Police. Uh, today I uh, can confirm that police have located few further human remains at the Pike River Mine. Uh, the remains of two, maybe three, uh, miners were located in a, a, a breakout um, sort of communal area towards the working part of the mine. Um, and the, these, the, the images were located during the final stage of the borehole drilling program. Unfortunately on this occasion we can't say uh, really who the men might be. Uh, on previous occasions we've been able to narrow down the possibilities based on information of where the miners were working prior to the first explosion. In this instance um, the, the remains of the miners were located in a vicinity and an area um, that, that they may have been having a short break and which makes that task um, quite difficult um, to identify who they were. Uh, I can also confirm in the mine and in the imagery we've just taken in this final stage we've located uh, two of the missing drift runners um, that were in the mine, uh, one of the two, uh, which, which were vehicles essentially used to transport the miners uh, and materials uh, underground, so in and out each day per shift. So we've located one of those two. Uh, and that drift runner was roughly in the same area um, that the human remains were found. The families of all 29 uh, miners have been updated and progressively spoken to the families this week uh, about, about this information. And you know, again, we recognise uh, after all this time that process is still really difficult for them, uh, for the families, and, and we, we remain committed to keeping the families updated um, with the activity and information that we um, received during the investigation. In terms of the borehole program that's been going for a number of months now, um, all 10 boreholes have concluded. Uh, we've, we've finished at the site, um, so the boreholes have been drilled, imaged and they've all been resealed on the site. Uh, this means we're now focusing on other aspects of the investigation, including uh, working through witness statements, um, facts and evidence and working with various experts um, related to the mine disaster. All equipment was removed from the remote uh, West Coast site last week and uh, we had a short cut of care uh, was held um, just with the um, working crews and ourselves on Monday. I'd just like to say uh, and take the opportunity to um, thank all those that worked on the borehole program with police. There were a number of expert contractors, um, specialty health safety uh, engineers as a, a really unique uh, and, and technically difficult program. Um, typically of Kiwis, uh, we've innovated, um, built cameras uh, that are probably unique worldwide for this kind of work which we understand really hasn't been undertaken before. Um, the reason we've gone to those lengths and, and gathered that expertise and, and innovated is because of course we couldn't get into the mine and we needed to forensically to the best standard we can without entry uh, image the mine to understand exactly what's happened uh, there in 2010. Um, so that unique and complex task, I'd like to thank uh, the, firstly the investigation team that were there and then all the uh, contractors and everyone that was uh, involved there and the constant adaptation and the conditions uh, that they worked in uh, to achieve the results we have. Um, so now um, essentially uh, to round off um, for the rest of this year we'll be uh, returning back to our investigation analysing the information we have um, the details that we've got and the, and the much better understanding we've had of the workings in the mine since 2018 and then we'll be working forward to, to um, uh, through through the a process of understanding um, where we end um, with the investigation. Thanks very much. Do you have a message for the families of the tragedy? Um, look, the, the families know and they're really well engaged with us, so we, we talk to them most weeks actually, and the, and the investigation team in particular, and I've met with the families and, and we continue to talk to them, so I probably wouldn't say anything here that we haven't said to them personally, but you know, the message is we, we, we've tried our best to understand their journey, that's never difficult when you've lost a loved one, I'm not in that position, um, and, and you know that the pain doesn't go away uh, since 2010. So we, we've been on a journey with the families and 
look, I'm, I've come laterally to that, but I understand the, the process. We're in good communication. Darrell, you said last month that you expected a, some sort of conclusions um, by the end of the year. Can you be any firmer on that now? Yes, yeah, very complex inquiry, Kurt. Um, look, it's, you know, it is unique. It, it's, it's, a, it's a considerably technical investigation with a lot of history. Um, so at the moment, I, I'm, I'm confident that we've got some milestones to meet, uh, as we would in any investigation. We've got experts to consult with. We had experts here last week. There'll be more coming in to review the evidence, and then uh, the investigation team, of course, are, uh, we are, we're refining our investigative process to facts and evidence. I would like to think we would be in a position by the end of the year we can make some decisions. Decisions about what? A prosecution or not. Um, so, yeah, we, you know, the New Zealand Police are engaged in this investigation for a reason, so we'll be applying the facts and evidence uh, pursuant to the Solicitor General's prosecution guideline. Uh, we'll engage Crown Solicitor uh, and, and, and make a full assessment as we would for any other case. Yeah. Can you just explain that area, the crib, um, where, where, where exactly that is? It's a good question because um, we just had this discussion with the team. So that there's, um, that there were, depending where the miners work um, on particular days, they would use particular areas possibly to have a break. Uh, so. It's not a formal communal room as such, as I'm told. It's more of an area that they may have been having a break at that time. So they've got away from the working part of the mine and they're, they're having some sort of break. And, and that's the reason um, that, that we, that they're sort of not where we expected to find them, so. Is it yeah. deep within the mine, is it? Yes, you're at the top end of the mine. So you've got to go for the working part of the mine and it's up the, the top end, yeah. Yeah, where we found the drift runners as well, or the drift runner, yeah. Uh, we expected to find the drift runners, they're a fairly large machine, and they're a vehicle after all, um, and so uh, we, we anticipated during the program, uh, and again, even before the borehole program, the investigation team, with the interviews done with the miners and the wider um, investigation, we understand how the mine was working day to day, so we did expect to find them around about those areas. Now bear in mind that it's a dynamic place, but yeah, that time of day, uh, we expected to to, to locate um, one or two. Um, the observation is we can't quite see, there's been a partial collapse around that drift runner, so we can't quite see all of it, but we can see indications of that, that it was a drift runner. Yeah, in Where's area. the other one? Not sure, actually. It'd be somewhere there, but we didn't come across it um, in our uh, imaging. Uh, that said, we've got a lot of imaging to, to review, um, and we've scoped uh, as, as we've recorded, but we, we may locate it, but we haven't found it. Well, the families have said they take heart from that imagery and looking at it and they believe it confirms that the men fell where they stood and likely didn't spend days trapped in there. Is that the police view? Yeah, I've got to, I've got to be careful here, right? Because um, we're reconstructing this at the moment. But that does seem to be that the, the, this, the scope there. That, yeah, that, that's right. So I've got to be particularly careful here. It's a forensic scene and we can't get in with pathologists, but that would indicate, yeah, that it's been in sort of an instantaneous event. Yeah. Sorry, just with the drift runner as well, do you know whose drift runner that was? Like, who was the driver of that particular one? I don't, um, but look, habitually when you're looking at shifts in a mine with 29 men, you know, that people would be assigned tasks. I'd expect we would know. and. and Generally we do, we've got lists of where people were, what tasks they're doing, and, and the contract isn't exactly what they're doing now. Like any workplace, how they do that day to day, who drove what, but we'd have a reasonable idea of who, yeah, yeah. Is that the type of thing you're hoping to uncover when you re-interview people? Uh, yes, I mean, it, it's, an, it's accepted fact, unfortunately, that the 29 miners were there, uh, and, and uh, it's deceased. Really the purpose of the borehole program was more so to understand the, the, the causation issues. So we're looking at the evidence, the nature of the explosions and everything that's gone on in that working mine to understand um, for our experts. So of course during that imagery we've located human remains and, and then things like drift runners that tell us something but evidentially not much. I would suggest that's just how the mine worked. Yep. Yeah.
Anything else? Thank you. Great, thank you. Thanks.